We should do that. So um, I want to thank everybody for being here. I hope I hope this is coming through for for you guys. Um, I, I do appreciate the, the opportunity to to at least give you some kind of update. And uh, I think everybody knows. So we're in our 18th day, and, and we don't have an organization yet in the house. Um, so I, I've been before you uh, quite a few times. We're still working. We're we're still working hard. I think to find a solution to this, uh, working with everybody that we can. Um, as I had told you before, I'd like the resolution to come quickly. Um, hasn't come as quickly as I want. I think the last time we got together, someone asked me, when would you have liked to have been organized? And I, I believe my answer was yesterday, is what I had said. So uh, this afternoon, um, you know, um, we're, we're trying to move forward. Um, we, have, we have discussed with some folks on, on the other side of the aisle and extended invitations to them to... Uh, um, join up with uh, our caucus to form a House majority. Um, and I, certainly, I, I think I had talked about it before, I, I haven't made it a secret that uh, um, I'd like the, the uh, other three Republicans that aren't in our caucus right now, I'd love to have them, them back in our caucus for sure. Um, but there, there are other folks too that, you know, we've, we've talked to and uh, we'd, we'd like to move forward with that. Uh, um, you know, and, and I have been asked before, um, and and this is this is certainly no surprise either, of how these folks have been treated in the past in the public, and I'm disappointed that you know I I think they got roughed up a little bit. There's no question about that, and that that's somewhat disappointing uh, that that happened at all, because uh, actually I'm I'm a person who really believes our our main job is to come down here and work on policy. Uh, we are the policy makers for the state. Um, and if we if we go if we get away from policy and we and we turn things into personal things and personal attacks and things like that that takes away from what what we really need to do work on policy so I think we've kept the personal things out of it um, you know uh, we've one of the things that would help us substantially is I also realize that we have people on the other side of the aisle that have good experience. And I think every, everyone knows that we've seen that. And bringing some experience into our team certainly doesn't help us at all either. Um, so that would be great. Uh, we have, like I say, we have extended individual invitations to folks, and we're still working on those. You know, part of it is a relationship building um, thing, I think. And, and we want to keep the relationships at a high level with people and continue to build those relationships. Um, it's day 18 into the legislative session. And I, uh, speaking for myself and not for my caucus, but I, I personally feel some responsibility here to, um, that, that uh, we need to get this and we need to get it resolved quickly. So um, I will be, I'm here this weekend and I've actually already got some, some folks that I'm going to talk to. Um, several of the leadership team and I, we're going to get together. Uh, we'll work on some details of, of some things. Um, I guess one of the one of the concerns that I have is as time goes by, we're going to have a lot of catching up to do when we do get an organization together. So um, I'm still I'm still upbeat though and confident that we will put a majority together. Um, as I'd stated before, quickly would be nice. Um, it'd, be, it'd really be good because it would be very helpful for us if we could. We're all kind of in a state of flux. We need we need to get our organization together and get settled in, and quite honestly, get to work. We people are still working, though. I've I've had several people contact me and say, "Well, you know, are you doing any work?" Well, as as you know, legislators go beyond just policy. We work for our constituents. Our constituents contact us on a regular basis, and we try and help them out. Whether that's connecting them with the right department personnel if they've got issues and, and things like that. So we are working with our constituents. We have had, uh, we have continued with the informational meetings. Uh, those have been helpful. I think for everyone, you know, we've dealt with uh, the, Re the Revenue Commissioner had come in and done a presentation, had presentations on PERS, TERS, uh, labor trends and, and different things like that. Today, the, uh, the uh, informational meeting had the Alaska Oil and Gas Conservation Commission come in and, and talk about their responsibilities and kind of give us an update and an eye on what, what they think they'll see in the future, uh, what's coming up in 2019, the things they dealt with in 2018, and I think that was very good. So um, 
I, one thing I wanted, I do want to state though is, uh, I, and I think this is important because I hope in order for us to get this organizer wrapped up, I appreciate the professionalism and the candor of all of the members of the House of Representatives and how they've handled themselves through this. Um, as bad as I, I personally feel this is, it certainly could be a lot worse. And so I do want to state that my colleagues, all of them have been incredibly professional and, and that, that will help us. Um, uh, and right now, you know, we, we have to have a willingness to have very tough conversations and those conversations are taking place and people are willing to have those. And, uh, but we've, we've, we've kept that at a professional level and I think that's, I think that's incredibly Im important. Um, every member of this body, and there's no doubt in my mind, every member of this body wants to see Alaska move forward and move forward in the appropriate way. Um, and that includes all 40 members of the House. So um, one of the things, though, um, I, I had been asked, well, what are the details? Um, I, I don't want to share the actual details or the offers that have been made. Um, others, others could disclose those offers, I think, but uh, I'm trying to give people a little bit of time and a little bit of space to consider these things and uh, so that they can do that. And, you know, if, if they want to participate in a majority caucus, I, I think they, they obviously need to think about that some more. Um, so I, I, won't, I, I, I won't get into specifics just with respect to my colleagues. Um, but uh, at the same time, I think uh, I do appreciate their openness to have those discussions. And, and they have been open at least to speak and have those discussions for sure. So questions? Zach, I'll let you pick. Becky? The other Republicans, can you say which other uh, individuals you've extended uh, invitations to, and can you characterize the kinds of tough conversations that you say are necessary to finish? Yeah. You know, I, I've, I, I've, t I've talked to those folks, and, and it really in respect to those folks, I'd rather not state exactly who they are, but I can tell you that some of the, some of the tough conversations are those, those things that, you know, w what, we, what we've tried to discuss is the points we agree on, and, and uh, there's always, though, with, with people, there's always points of disagreement. And that's kind of the, the policy versus personal issue. You know, we, we, I, th I think we're so much better off sticking to policy when we talk about things and, and try to make sure that it doesn't get personal with people. Um, we don't, I have friends on, on th that are in the other caucus. I, I, and I have had for years. Uh, people I'd worked with on a municipal level years ago and, and had spent quite a bit of time with. Um, and they'll remain my friends. I, you know, I hate to use the old cliche, my dad's old saying, friends come and go, enemies accumulate. Um, I don't think anybody down here wants to accumulate enemies, but quite honestly, in respect for those folks, um, um, I, you know, those, those conversations, some of these conversations we've had, uh, um, I think should remain confidential. When I've had a confidential conversation with someone, I, I, I'll keep it confidential for sure. Um, and, uh, uh, just, just due to the fact that I, that I do have a lot of respect for them. Andrew Kitchenman, Alaska Public Media and KTOO. In the past, um, Democrats from northern and western Alaska have caucused uh, with Republicans prior to the, the, the past legislature. Um, those parts of the state um, Parts of them, um, residents rely on government services, uh, perhaps a little bit more than is typical across the state. And the state is looking at a roughly one-third cut, potential one-third cut in the budget for, uh, for unrestricted general funds. Uh, does it make it harder to attract maybe the type of demo, some of the Democrats who have caucus with the Republicans in the past when you don't know the details of that cut. You know, I don't know if it necessarily makes it makes it harder, but um, what I what I would like to see uh, Alaska is so different in different regions, and I, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. But from a regional perspective, um, I would like to make sure that we form an organization that has regional representation, because it is you know I'm I'm from the interior. Um, and you know we we have we have uh, great mining, um, not only opportunities that exist right now, but great potential and different things. Um, 
not a lot of commercial fishing in my district, uh, you know, and and uh, we've 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 been blessed with a great private industry that that provides a substantial boost to our economy, and it's not the same in every region. So, quite honestly, I would um, the best that we could put together would would be good regional representation from all areas of the state. I you know to a degree I understand how people live in other areas. But really, I've been in the interior a long time. So that's, that's a small degree compared to somebody who actually is from the community or lives in the community. So I would like to see us be a little better rounded out with good regional representation. Um, it's fascinating how long you can live in a state and not actually know how people live in other areas or not really know the details. But you do find those things out, and particularly when you serve here in the legislature and you get to interact with those folks. But. Uh, no, I, I would really like to like to bring folks into a majority that has good regional representation. It's kind of, kind of one of those things where you, you know you get to know each other better, and maybe you understand things a little bit better. James Brooks from the Anchorage Daily News. I had been under the impression that you had reached out to folks before. Um, can you talk about what's different about this time? Well, actually, I think, quite honestly, we're all feeling a little more pressure, and uh, and I am very anxious at this point in time to really get started. Um, the clock is the clock is ticking. Everyone knows that. So um, I don't know that it's so different, and it's not necessarily different people, but I just think everybody's feeling like you know we really do do need to get started. Um, our inf like I say, our informational meetings have been great, and they've provided a lot of stuff and everything. Are the but, offers different? Um, you know, the, the offers aren't really too much different. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're really out there. It's, it's um, with, the, with the even numbers that we have, it, it, it's difficult. I understand how it, how it might be difficult for somebody, you know. I mean, granted, everyone's aware of the numbers, you know. We have 20, 20 members in our caucus. Um, you know, when you ask somebody, do you want to be number 21? Well, yeah. You know, it, it's obviously it'd be easier if you were number 23 or number 24. You know, that I think I think folks feel that pressure to some degree, but it's a lot to think about too as well. So, yeah, you know, I haven't set time limits and said, well, there's a drop dead date on this, you know, and you have to do this and that because I honestly don't think that would be fair to people either. You know, if they need time to think, then I need to provide them that time. You, you had uh, criticized uh, personal attacks on uh, members. Um, would you also extend, are, are you also concerned when the state political parties target members who switch caucuses for funding uh, primary opponents? I, I yeah, I, I personally had had a concern with that. Um, um, you know, um, personal attacks, like you say, I'd criticize those. I also always keep in mind that I've been very fortunate and have had very few personal attacks directed at me. Um, in a perfect world, I guess, we wouldn't have those directed at anybody. And I know that hasn't happened in the past. And like I said, I have to look at my own experience. I, I'm, I'm, I feel quite blessed, to be honest with you, because I haven't been a person that's had a tremendous amount of personal attacks. You know, and I, I can't explain it. I'd like to tell you it's my bright and shiny personality or something, but that's probably not it. But I've just been very fortunate, and that hasn't happened. And so if uh, we, we stay away from that, I think, because um, like I said, our, our job is policy. You know, we're the policy makers. And, and there's plenty of policy that we need to deal with upcoming, particularly I'll mention the, the, what I think are just really the three big things that we need to focus on. Obviously, the budget, and and it, I think we're all anticipating and anxiously awaiting what we will see from the administration in the budget. And I, I, I can't tell you what's in there for sure, but there has been the public has been very concerned with uh, what what they've really deemed as SB 91, and do do we do a repeal? I think a lot of people are thinking there's provisions we need to repeal and replace and I think everyone agrees on that that that's one of the main concerns has been a focus of our constituents and of course the the one that's always glaringly obvious is a permanent fund dividend and where we go and I think those are the three main things to deal with um, there are other issues that come up for sure but a main theme that I have certainly heard from my constituents are budget PFD 
and crime. And so um, I, I just am anxious to get us underway and get started so that we can really get a focus on those things. Do you think you can operate on just one or two vote margin? Pardon me? Operate on just one or two Mike votes Bradner margin. Or, or oh, Mike Bradner from Legis oh. Legislative Digest. But can you operate on just a one or two vote margin that people cross over? You know, I, th I think it's, I th I think it's doable. I don't think it's anybody's preference. You, you know, I think it would be. I've I've had some people ask me that today, and uh, one of one of the issues, of course, that always comes up, if you're going to draw things right down the line, and you're just going to have caucus votes, you wouldn't be able to do that. Now, my experience has been my um, um, my experience, which is limited experience, uh, but a couple of terms. Uh, a fair portion of the time, a lot of the things, in particularly in the House of Representatives that we vote on. Doesn't, doesn't follow party lines or caucus lines, you know, a lot of the things we've done. We've had people have come up with some really good ideas. Um, I was told years ago when I first got elected, well, you know, once you're a minority member, you know, you're out. Never get a bill passed. I was a minority member last year, got a bill passed. Uh, we had several of those because our folks, our, our members of the House of Representatives, took a long, hard look at whether it was good policy or not and voted on the policy. And I still have a lot of a lot of confidence in voting on the policy. It's usually those big items that get hung. You know, it's it's no nobody no surprise. It's usually the budget that that, that can hang us up. What I hear from a lot of your people as well as on the other side is they want more freedom. Uh, and and will you operate with bound caucuses? I mean, you know. Speaker Chennault, when he brought the members over from, from rural Alaska, one of the things he got was that he couldn't get mousetrapped by a minority of his own caucus. I mean, it promoted freedom. And are we going to have bound caucuses no matter what? Yeah, we're, we're still discussing that because usually a binding caucus, and the binding caucus that I served in only dealt with two issues, and that was a vote for the budget for the... the um, the that was produced from the finance committee from your own caucus if you're in the majority, and procedural votes on the floor. And there, were, there was no other bind on any other thing. You, you, you had to make that decision. We haven't really gotten to that point to where we've you know, made that deter determination of a firm binding caucus. I wouldn't think it would go beyond that. And I, I've, one of the things that I'm the most excited about and anxiously awaiting on is we have 12 new members in the House. This will be their first term. And I think they're bringing in a fresh perspective and a lot of, a lot of good ideas. Um, I'm very, I've had an opportunity, of course, to meet, meet all 12. And I've, uh, I've gotten to know the ones that are in my caucus quite a bit better. And uh, I'm anxious to get these people to work because I really think that they're, uh, um, and I'm not an old man by any stretch of the means, but I think I told everybody most of these people are either the age of my children or younger. Um, so they do bring in, they honestly bring in a different perspective than I have on some of these things. And they are our future. They, they'll be, they're, they're really looking into that. So I think that's critical. Sir, about the Matsu yeah. uh, representatives. Please. And that they are, they are somewhat bound by hit groups or whatever you want to call them out there. You know, they can't join you know, across the party lines, and that, that constrains the caucus right there. I, I'm, quite honestly, I work with those folks on a regular basis. I, have, I haven't had that discussion with them. They seem to be uh, very willing to move forward with what we can do, and so. If you have follow-up questions, you can yeah. email Yes, can I, can I, I follow up, please? You absolutely can. can email I? me your question okay. in the next 30 minutes, and I'll get you a response today. Well, I'm yeah. not interested in your response. Um, I'll, I'll have a prepared response for representatives. But he's like I mean, these representatives there. serve out there, and they have some groups that can target them and have in the past, and they don't have a freedom necessarily, a motion within their group. So that's a constraining, a constraining situation. And the people on the outside are looking at that, and they want to know, especially with relation with Governor Dunleavy, that... That's not a controlling factor in the caucus, that you're always having to confront with that, that factor. I think what we have established is each member 
is, is an individual member of our caucus. Um, and I certainly can't make decisions for individual members. So that, I, my best answer to you is individual members will have to decide. people say they are concerned about that. They, okay, that, okay, that concern hasn't been, okay. been necessarily brought to if me, you, uh, but I do If all questions, I'll that. take them in the next half hour and get yeah. you guys prepared statements and get everything you need. Yeah. Cool.